No, Jim. No. It's not going to happen, ever. Listen, man, I know how to do mathematics, and I see the numbers, man. The numbers don't lie. And I'm on to bigger and better things anyway, bro. Haven't you seen the new show? No, it's totally cool. You would need to get me some better, like, guests. You know, you throw me out there. I, get, I don't have anything to talk about. I'm just making shit up as I go along. You need to give me something to talk about, and maybe I could do something. Really? Like who? Destiny's Child? They don't even play together anymore. Oh my god, I don't care what Roger said. I don't care if Roger is jolly. There is no f***ing way on God's green earth, on purple mountains, mother majesty, am I ever going to do the damn Crocodile Smith show. End of story. Goodbye. Hey everybody and welcome to the Crockett Dame Smith Show. We hope you enjoyed our segment on how we're not going to be doing the Smith Show. But you know, sometimes in life, life just makes decisions for you and it's not really up to you. It's kind of like someone else is in control. Maybe Jesus? Now I'm going to tell you the truth. I am pumped and excited to be here and I really want to see you guys and I want to talk to you about a lot of the different things. But we've made some changes to the program to make it more interesting and fun for you. That's right, today I'm going to be conducting an interview with Mike Wu's Raging Bone coming straight off the North Shore with the hot punk rock, pop rock, rock and roll kind of rock that you send home to mom and mom approves of it because it rocks so well. That's right. I'm going to be sitting down with Mike Wu's Raging Bone, and I'm so excited about it because we're going to be talking about something incredibly interesting, and what that is is Mike Wu's Raging Bone. But before we get into that, I just wanted to sit back with you guys for a while and kind of touch base and let you know what I've been thinking about. You know, that since the last time we've talked, a lot of things have changed. And you see, a lot of people weren't too fond of the, the, the former products. And, and here's a couple messages I got actually about the show. This was a uh, an email I actually got from Juanisa, which reads, Dear Crocodile Smith, I watch a program every day because I want to kill myself, but I don't have the heart to do it. And watching your show helps me get closer to pulling the trigger. Now this um, offended me at first, but then I thought about it and I thought if I had that much of a power over someone to help them do something difficult, then I think I'm doing something right. Um, we have another uh, email I got here from uh, Randy Savage, the Macho Man, who died. There's another message here I got from... Um, <coughs> A man named Brian, who lives out west, and he actually says here, Dear Crocodile Smith, me and my wife were thinking about having children, but now seeing your show, just knowing that people like you exist, we will never, ever have a baby. Because you're disgusting. Wow. So, I'm really getting my name out there, it seems like, and you know, I think people are really watching watching me do my thing so it's really great anyway um i want to take you now to the interview i conducted with mike who's raging bone let's take a look at that so tell us if you, if you wanted if, if i was to say what is what is what is mike who's raging bone all about what the f would you possibly say well actually it's changing i mean it was mainly about eating like burgers and uh -huh. pizza before and now and now it's more about like drinking and wanting to kill yourself right and I think that's a good progression. I think a lot of people can relate to that. you regret eating. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, we wanted to be positive before, even though, like... Positivity I, is overrated. It's true. No, I wanted to make people happy, so we tried to make mindless music about eating food and jerking off and watching porn. Uh-huh. But, like, after five years, I, I couldn't put out any more. I ran out of positive juice. So now I just sing about, like... Killing yourself, but it's still the same positive, happy melody. Same positive vibe. Well, sometimes you gotta reel them in with the funny stuff. Yeah, this, that's reality. where it is. Yeah. Once you got them, then you can open up your heart, and it might be a dark heart. Mike Wu may have a dark heart. And you may not know that. You thought it was just about burgers and pizza. It's still about burgers and pizza, though. But I want to eat them and die. And also. die. <laughs> it's a good way to go out. I'm gonna continue drinking these multiple drinks. I, I like heart that. Heart cirrhosis too. 
I don't have a heart anymore. Neither do you. Is Mike Wu who people think he is? No, because people, I think most people think I'm probably a, a happy guy because that's what I, I try to spread the, the happiness or whatever. Well, they say unhappy people try to make other people happy. Yeah, it's, it's probably true for, that's probably a thing throughout society. Most people that are spreading joy or, or whatever are doing it because they understand how horrible f***ing life is. They want to make it better for people. Well, think about it. You could have, if you're an unhappy person in general, you could have all the money in the world. You're still you. You're still yeah. you. You might still be miserable. It doesn't, money is not going to bring happiness. Nothing. It's true. If you well, can't be happy with nothing, then you won't be happy with anything. There you go. Guys, we got to take a quick break, but we're going to be right back with more with my interview with Mike Wu, with Mike Wu's Raging Bone. Yeah, well, Here's the conclusion of my interview with Mike Wu's Raging Bow. No, wait, wait, can, 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 I, can I tell the story yes. about when you were drunk? Oh, no. No? Are you talking about Spotlight? Yeah. Uh, hi, Mark. So every oh. once in a while, someone will convince me to go on a Sunday night to the old Spotlight <laughs> Tavern for the karaoke with Nick D'Amico, which you should really check out because it's a great time. Anyway, me and uh, my brother were there. We were enjoying some cocktails. We happened to see Mike Wu sitting at a table. He was dying. He said, Mike Wu, I said, Mike Wu, what the f*** is going on? He's like, oh, I've been drinking vodka all night. I'm, I don't know where I am. So I'm like, look, man. I'm like, Can you should, maybe maybe you should go vomit. I'm like, you know how to do it. I mean, I don't know if you were a cheerleader in high school, but it it's very simple. It was. It just, you say that like you... You might know by experience. I Were do. Were you a cheerleader in high school? I was. So anyway, so so we we, we convinced nice we convinced the guy to get in uh in into the bathroom. Like you gotta throw up, you know, and then you can come with us. Don't drive home. You can come with us. So we go in the bathroom, or we go out back to the bar, and then and then he's up there singing. What is this song? I will survive. I will survive. Oh, as long as I know I love, I know I can survive. I will survive. Of all. So we're out there. We don't know what's going on. After the song, we're, all of a sudden we're standing there, and then we look at each other. And remember, at the exact same time, we both say, "Oh, shit. Mike Wu!" So we run to go find his ass. He's like dead on the floor. So we're like, "Okay, well, he's not dead, dead." So we're like, "Let's alert the authorities." We tell Chris Harvey, and he's he's, he's like the, the he's like the president of Beverly. So <laughs> he took care of it. And as I was saying, we're standing at the door and. The bartender's like, you guys gotta go. I'm like, oh, we just want to make sure Mike Wu's okay. And he's like, yeah, man, uh, you know, the responsible adult has it. You <laughs> morons could leave. But that was that was the Mike Wu's drunk. We lost him. It was like a movie. It was like a, a sitcom that, that episode. Was classic it was like Mike an episode Wu. of Boy Meets World or something. I well, I am Corey Matthews. I mean, you certainly are. You guys remember Ryder Strong? He was a sexy guy. He was a sexy looking guy. He was sexy. He was a sexy guy. What was his character's name? Um, Sean. Oh, his older Sean. brother. His older brother. No, the friend, Sean. He was like the oh, cool guy. Oh, yeah. The his, one that was like the bad boy. His older brother went to college on the show with one of the Lawrence brothers. Right, yeah. yeah. The, the Joey, young, the second, no. the middle one. Not Joey. Whoa! Matthew. Um, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Whoa! Tell, no, tell us about the show coming up. So this is the first time in a while that I've actually tried putting an entire build to my, uh, together myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, I failed for a while. I asked a lot of bands, and then they—it's not they, easy. They remembered that I'm, I'm Mike Wu, and they're like, "You suck." Mm. So I got a lot of no's, like a lot of so no's. So you got the whole Mike Wu thing working yeah. against you a little uh, bit. People don't like me, but I ended up getting some great bands. Marianne Toilet in the Runs, which is like pretty much the best band for us to play with, and then we got the Knock Ups, which are a great up and coming kind of garage punky kind of band. And then we got Lady Mob, which is, these are all local kind of bands. Lady right. Mob hasn't played in ages, but they're they a solid kind of garagey kind of rock band. It's good shit. It sounds good. It's going to be a good band. And the show is taking place at uh, Kodo, which used to be Bangkok. this legendary Bangkok. Bangkok. That's what I thought. It's going to it's gonna be the greatest show of all time, is pretty much what I gathered from the information you Yeah, you want to be one of those seven people there. And this is the first time Mike was, had an opportunity to pick the bands by himself that he wanted to have for the show. Because a lot of the time in this bullshit industry, known as, you know, music yeah. and junk, 
You you get stuck playing with bands that that, that you know your mom wouldn't listen to that that, that, that just doesn't fit you in, in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I've done a few of those. Yeah, I mean it happens quite a bit. Um, so you should definitely go to that show. Uh, mean, it's, yeah, it's gonna be good. The band's are solid. It's gonna yeah. be a good show. And and you guys brought your guitar. You're gonna sing a song for us today, right? Oh, it's a, it's a happy little ditty. It's real good. This is for everyone that that loves life. It's gonna be good. I think you guys are gonna like this. One, two, one, two. Never ever loved her, had a day I didn't want to die. I f***ing hate your life. I f***ing hate your wife. I guess the weekend drink to this. When it's Friday night, pretend that I'm alright. Everything's alright. time I had with the bone um, the whole Wu-Tang Clan really uh, you know made some uh, serious efforts to change the globe in a uh, respectful way not too over barring uh, you know uh, we, 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 we all go our different roads in life and sometimes we're gonna cross paths and when we see each other just make sure to say hello I'm Crocodile. 